Today, you're gonna to learn how to lazy load images and other stuff using bounds.js. And just take a look right over here in the network tab. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now, Linode supplies servers that let you deploy apps, sites, and services that are both flexible and scalable. Linode's one-click apps make it easy to set up a web stack or a WordPress instance in under a minute. Simple pricing starting at $5 per month ensures there's no hidden fees or surprise bills. So sign up with the link below and use this code right here to receive a free $20 credit on your Linode account. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of course, Cetro.com. So today we're gonna take a look at lazy loading images. So what is that? Well, let's say for instance, you had a real long page and uh, a, if you have a website visitor and they don't go past uh, above the fold, or for instance, they don't scroll down. Why would you need to load those images as they traditionally would be in making requests to the server? Well, uh, this makes it, lazy loading images makes it so that it's asynchronous and that when a person scrolls down, it's only going to load those assets that are needed, which makes sense uh, because, you know, bandwidth and all that, it's, it's a valuable resource. So uh, right here is bounds.js. This is the demo page. I'll go ahead and link it in the YouTube description. It's gonna show some of the things that you can do. Uh, and also more specifically, their documentation at their GitHub page has a lot more information and my wife is texting me i'm gonna throw my phone back here uh and yeah you can do a lot more than just lazy loading images though you can implement infinite scroll uh avoiding x lover i'm not sure about that but also based you know scroll activated animations i'm going to show you how to do as well so yeah make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet click the bell notification icon to get an actual notification when i do upload because i've been doing this forever and i'm uploading every week left and right all right so let's get started all right, so let's go ahead and get started. Get out your command line or your console. I'm using the uh, the preview of uh, the new Windows 10 terminal. And I'm in my code folder. So let's go ahead and create a new folder. Uh, make directory, um, let's just call this bounds. And we'll CD into bounds. And then we'll type code period, just to get up the Visual Studio Code editor, which is the editor I use. Before we continue on, because I, we're gonna be using uh, the Node Package Manager to install uh, the bounds.js library. We're gonna run npm init y, and that's just gonna create a uh, package.json file here for our project dependencies. And then we're going to also use uh, the parcel bundler. All right, so parcel is a very quick and easy way. Uh, to, it's a very quick and easy bundler that you can use for your project. And I did a crash course on that. So just if I can't, I'll probably forget, but if I do forget, I check the channel search for how to use parcel. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and install that globally uh, first. So if you don't have it already, you're gonna have to run this command, npm, uh, in, uh, no, no, npm install globally parcel, bundler like that. That's what you want. Um, I already installed it. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip uh, that process, but go ahead and install that. And then we just want to install bounds.js as well. So it's npm install bounds.js and save it as a dependency. All right. So it's very quick. As you can see, we're ready to rock and roll. So um, we're going to come back here though momentarily. Um, to run the parcel um, command. But before we do that, we have to create a couple files first. So let's get out our code editor. And as you can see, we have our node modules with our bounds.js and also our package.json. So let's go ahead and create here in the project root and index.html file, exclamation point, enter. We've got our quick boilerplate there. And then also script source. And that's going to go to index.js, which doesn't yet exist. So let's create that. So index.js. All right. And then we want to import bound from bound.js. All right. So now that we have that basic, hey, you know what? I forgot one thing. Let's uh, link up a style sheet. So link, and this is going to go to CSS, main.css. This time I'm not going to use SAS because we don't have that many rule sets. So I'm going to create the CSS folder with simply a main.css file. Now we can go back to our terminal here, run parcel index.html. And it's going to create this quick dev server here at localhost 
one, two, three, four. And let's get this up. And there we go. We're ready to rock and roll with our project. Awesome, awesome stuff. Okay, so to get started, we're first gonna go ahead and write some uh, HTML here. So Control B, get rid of that sidebar. And just up here, we're gonna have these things, uh, just a few section elements here. So section, H1, lazy loading images. And then we'll also have um, just a paragraph with lorem 50 here. So 50 words of lorem ipsum. Okay, placeholder text. So now we'll do another section down here. And we're gonna set these sections to like 100 viewport heights and CSS momentarily. Um, for the first thing, we're not gonna have an image at first. I'm just gonna show you simply uh, HTML element, an H2 testing this stuff right here, just so I can demonstrate um, you know, the absolute basics and then we'll get into the image based stuff as well. So save that, we'll go to main.css and just some real quick, I uh, simple, we have some body, a body rule set at a hundred, the height for a hundred viewport heights, margin zero padding, you know, nothing's going crazy. I'm not too concerned about anything being responsive here. We just wanted to work on desktop. So uh, section, we're gonna specify hundred viewport heights for those as well. And margin bottom is gonna be 2 a.m just to push things down a little bit uh, from each other. I was doing a test there. Um, margin top for uh, 4EM for the H1 and font size will be three rem units. There we go. And then our H2, I, we're gonna by default set the opacity at zero and then set a transition property for a simple animation if the opacity changes and it will last for one second. Then we're gonna do an image, and I just re <clears throat> realized, and I am probably on top of the code. All right, a bad quality here. I will do a width of 100%. This is for the future image stuff. Uh, and then we're gonna come back, we're gonna have one more rule set, but I'm not gonna quite show you what that is yet until we get to the index, uh, the other stuff. So uh, after saving that, this is what you should have so far. Um, yeah, blank, nothing here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is go to our index.js. And by the way, uh, I'm not gonna be demonstrating everything that's a part of this bounds.js, but you can go here and it has some pretty good documentations for installation, how to use your options, the API, everything that you would want. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is create a constant of a boundary and it's an instance of bound and it accepts some options although you don't have to specify any options um, one of the things that it accepts is margins as a property and the value can accept uh, by default the margins are top left bottom right and they by default are all zero um, if you want to change up the margins for the bounds, which you're probably confused at this point, like what is the margin? What's, what exactly does that do? Well, basically it will I make it so that whatever uh, entity that you're watching, that the boundary is watching, like the HTML element, uh, it will activate uh, based on this value that you specify here. Otherwise, if you don't want it to be zero. So if you want something like your images to load uh, maybe 100 pixels uh, before it comes into view, then you would put like 100 right here. Hopefully that makes sense. You can experiment with it yourself as uh, we're about to do anyhow. And uh, you'll see how this works here momentarily. For us for now, actually we are gonna leave it right there. And the next step we're gonna create, uh, we have to get our H2 element. So constant H2 equals document, query selector or h2 this is all just vanilla js stuff uh, boundary now we're going to watch and the first argument it, it, it accepts is uh, which html element you want to watch we're going to say our h2 which we just defined so in the next parameter and it, it can accept i believe three parameters um, it's going to be based on this function is for i uh, on enter. So when it watches this element, when it enters the boundary, then what will happen? And that's completely up to us. We can console log, for instance, uh, 
hey, wow, that's really stupid. Hey, I couldn't think of anything better. Um, and that's all we have to do. So let's give this a shot. I uh, Let's go ahead, let's get out Control Shift I, and look at the console. So if you see nothing is there, because remember we have 100 viewport height on both of the sections, and that H2 element is in the second section. So let's scroll down. There it goes. So it just started right there. It'll keep going as well. All right. If you don't want things to keep going like that, you can uh, add in boundary, unwatch H2. So watch what happens now when we do that. It'll do it once, and then guess what? It won't do it again. And that's important if you have uh, effects that you only want to occur once, all right? Sometimes you may not. Um, but let's go ahead, we'll uncomment that, get rid of the console log, and we'll add in H2 class list, add reveal. So reveal is a class that doesn't yet exist, but we're gonna add it. And again, this is just the vanilla JavaScript way of adding a class to an, to an HTML element. So let's go back to our main, and let's add a reveal class here, and that's going to change the opacity from zero to one, and we should get a nice animation for one second based on this transition property. So let's give this a shot. Now, why didn't we see it come in? Well, if I go back here, I'll show you. Uh, let's keep that console log. All right, let's go back. Well, that's because it's happening and it's adding that opacity before we get there. And that's because of the bounds, we've added 100 pixels to it. We still may not see it though, because one second is pretty fast if we set that back to zero. So if we go over here, come down, we just barely see it, but you could do a negative as well. So like negative 400. Watch what happens now. So let's uh, refresh, scroll down, and there it goes. So it takes quite a while for it to show up. So hopefully you can understand how this is you know, applicable to things that uh, they could be based on page scrolls even. Uh, for instance, if we open up in, this, in the third argument here, another function here where we say, h2 class list dot remove reveal and so this third argument is for when it leaves all right so now watch what happens so let's refresh it enters and then it leaves it enters and leaves look how exciting that is all right so now let's get into um a you know, for the, the whole purpose of why you're here, which is lazy loading images. Um, so what we'll do now is we're gonna create uh, a HTML element for an image, and I'll just put it right here. And we'll put an image, and we're not gonna have a source. There's no source initially because we don't want these images to load when the page loads. And if you had a source, it would load, they would all load automatically. Instead, we're gonna have a data source property and it's gonna be bound to the actual address that we want to use, all right? So we'll be able to grab this value data source, or this value here from data source in JavaScript uh, with our bounds.js, and then we can make that value based on the source attribute for the image tag using vanilla JavaScript. You'll see how it works in a second. Um, let's get rid of the alt for a second here, and we're gonna add, uh, no, that's it, that's all we're adding. Technically, we should leave the alt there, and we'll just say mountain, okay, because this is a mountain. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and save that, and we'll come back here to our index.js, is we're gonna get rid of all of that stuff and we're going to create our, we're gonna get our image here. So document.query selector. And, and right now we're only gonna do this for one image, not multiple. Multiple will come after this example. Uh, I like to be a little bit more elaborate just so people can understand. All right, so uh, we'll just say, we're gonna create, instead of defining everything in the boundary uh, watch method 
for our functions, we're going to create constants that will act as functions that uh, will just reference it specifically, and it makes the code a little bit easier to read. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So we'll just call this when image enters. All right, and we'll say, let's see, we'll, we'll say image dot source equals image dot data set dot source. So we say image.source is image.dataset.source. So if you're confused as to what that is, well, basically any um, custom properties that we have here, notice it's source, you simply emit the data hyphen. So that's in so this is in reference to right here. So it's gonna get this value. So we're making the image.source this value right here, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. And then we're gonna have an image class list and I'm going to demonstrate something here um, that you might w want to do, but you probably shouldn't do. Um, and I just want to uh, make that um, kind of obvious. And I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you why you wouldn't want to do it. So boundary, we're also going to say unwatch the image because we only want this to happen once. Uh, we don't want to keep on loading images, correct? Correct. So console log, we'll just do this just for reference. All right, and then finally, we'll come down here um, and we'll say boundary dot watch our image and then when image enters. All right, and before we check this out, we're gonna go to our main.css and we're gonna add these two properties to our image property now that we're working with the image instead of the H2. And now let's go ahead and let's refresh this and notice how it nicely faded in, right? Well, it's because for one reason, I already had this loaded. This image is already loaded when I was testing in the cache. And let's change up the image real quick. Uh, the image address, I'm gonna change this to three instead, just so it's something that I haven't yet loaded. And now let's go ahead and scroll down here. And we're gonna see it's not gonna be so smooth because it's gonna be loading. The image, while the image is loading, it's not gonna show any opacity, so watch. So the, the opacity completely gets hidden. Uh, so that's why I would emit that. Now, of course, once it's already loaded here, uh, and of course we're working on slow 3G, it will fade in nicely. So that's just something to keep an eye out for. Let's go back here and change this to no throttling. All right, so now how would we do this for multiple images? All right, so what we'll do is, I'm gonna get rid of this testing this stuff stuff here and just uh, paste this a few times. So uh, let's see here. And we're gonna change these up here um, to two, three, we'll do five and six here as well. Okay, all right, so we'll save that. And it's not going to work though, because of our code. Um, in fact, I'm not even gonna try it because I, I, I don't want these to be loaded into cache. So um, what we'll do is, because this is just query selector, we're only selecting one. We need to change this to query selector all. And then a couple other things. So we'll say first we're going to return this function here. And this is gonna change up just slightly. And we're gonna say Image source, same here. Uh, let's uncomment this out. And we're gonna unwatch this and leave all this the same. Next thing we have to do is image. We're gonna take our boundary watch and wrap it in an image for each because there's multiple images. So we need to watch each one of those. So we pass in the image. We say boundary watch IMG. And then when image enters, it's going to accept the image. And then up here, this will accept the image. So hopefully that makes sense now. So now let's give this a shot. Oh yeah, that's right. We have to remove this uh, CSS right here. There we go, sorry about that. So now let's give it a shot. And they're loading, it's kind of hard to tell, but they were all loading sequentially um, as I was going down the page. And they weren't, there weren't actual requests being made uh, to any type of servers when I was 
uh, scrolling. I mean, until I was scrolling. They weren't all made at once, in other words, as you can see right here. Very, very, very cool and handy stuff. So there's a lot much more that you can do with this, of course. Um, as the, the, this mentions, there's a few use cases that you can, uh, you can use for lazy loading images, infinite scroll, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know about avoiding a next lover though. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that. You learned something new. Let me know what you think about it in the YouTube comments, or if you use something else, let me know. All right, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon. Goodbye.